guys. First of all, first things first, obviously what we've got going on here, take a deep breath and smile. I don't think we're taking enough deep breaths. And I know that that sounds silly. And yet take a deep breath, guys. It matters. It matters right now. We're going to talk about lead gen uh, today, and we're going to talk about exhaustive lead generation. And so one of the things that I put on there is the free, the little parentheses free. Um, but I want you to understand that it's not exhaustive in the list, and it can be, but it's a both and. It's exhaustive in the list of what we can do, and it's exhaustive in the fact that we have to do. We're in the moment of have to do, okay? So there's a lot of things we can do. So take a breath and smile. Everything changes psychologically when you take a deep breath. Pause a second. Your brain resets, and when you smile, your brain starts to agree that things are happy. We need to agree that things are happy and good. I know there's a lot going on, and so y'all, again, get to be the changing of the guard. Brand new pad. I've already gone through one whole thing. So we're going to get going, and I want to start off having a couple of conversations. Before we start making our list of what we can do, I want to talk about a few things about why we can do and systems of doing, Okay. So the very first thing I want to make sure that we start drawing a, uh, an exclamation point on is this phrase. It, in lead generation, it is marketing-based prospecting enhanced. Okay. This is not an old conversation. I mean, this is not a new conversation. This is an old conversation that I'm regurgitating. This is out of the millionaire real estate agent. So the truth behind this statement, though, is so relevant to everything that we have going on right now. And there's a huge difference between marketing and prospecting, though. So let's draw a line into this understanding first. Marketing-based versus, I mean, marketing-based and prospecting enhanced. We have the ability right now to present a message to the world. And in all honesty, like that has not changed. This is not anything new. This is something we should have been doing is putting our message out into the world. A message that goes out, a story that goes out, how we uh, portray ourselves to whomever it is that we're looking to be able to um, connect with the consumer. It is all a marketing based conversation. We are getting that stuff out there into the world and sending our messages even um, more enhanced when we, do it through advertisement, right? So maybe we do things through a paid advertisement on Facebook, or we do uh, create some door hangers and we go hang into uh, doors in our neighborhood. Maybe we do uh, put our faces, slap our faces on grocery carts, okay? Those things are all marketing-based. The prospecting enhanced side of it comes when we gain those lists, when we gain the list of those things. So like, So if somebody reaches out to us, that is a receiving moment. That's a prospecting kind of gray area. But what's not a gray area is that my ability to make a phone call. So in marketing based, prospecting enhanced, we still have to go out and do the phone calls. We have to do the outbound side of things. A lot of times we get into this mode of lead generation and we want to feel this inbound enhancement to everything that we do. And the reality, it's an outbound how. Uh, enhancement. It's a prospecting enhance. So it's marketing based. So you're you should be creating material that is stirring up curiosity in people to connect with you. That's called story. That that's a big piece to the story clause of everything that we do. I said yesterday in a relationship culture, story is our currency. And if you have curiosities about how to create story, um, I did that class yesterday. We'll repost it, and I'm happy to do it over and over and over again, even one-on-one -on -one with some of you guys if we need to start creating some of those uh, messages to send out to the world. So marketing-based, prospecting enhanced, that's one of the very first things we need to realize. Everything that we're doing in lead generation needs to be marketing-based and prospecting enhanced. That is just one of the rules, kind of uh, baselines in lead generation through the millionaire real estate agent, which is, in my opinion, a really great book. And we're gonna dig into what they call, I'm oh, sorry, before we do that, Let's have a conversation about this marketing based versus prospect and pro prospecting enhanced. We have this idea of marketing versus prospecting. In our brains, we have created prospecting as something that we're doing in our marketing, and that's not true. If you are doing marketing, you are sending out a message, okay? 
if you're prospecting, you are legitimately going after business. So that is an outbound. So this is a message. This is an outbound. And if I were right to say anything, this is a call to action. Anything that I'm doing in prospecting should have a call to action tag on it. So if I'm looking at my world, I want to start to divide where's my marketing based moment for prospecting enhanced situations. I need to really define what are these two things in my world. If I started going out and I put a Facebook message out to the world, so I've put my story out there, that's marketing. Regardless of the question that you ask, that's marketing. Now, if I were able to look at the people who commented on that stuff and I were to be, begin to drive conversations and I was interacting one-on-one, -on -one, if I was actually having a two-way conversation <clears throat> that moved into a call to action, I've just moved marketing into prospecting. And I hope this makes sense because a lot of us are creating content to be able to just show who we are and we're not gaining anything from that. We've got to be able to make sure there's some sort of call to action. And there's a few ways in which we can create these call to actions. All right. So let's talk about the call to action real fast. Call to action. One is be specific about closing. All right. So closing. And I think closing is in general a call to action. But if you think about closing somebody, how can you ask them this question specifically to move them into the next space that you need them to move into? This doesn't necessarily mean you go from, hey, I just met you. You want to buy a house? Hey, I just met you. You know who's looking to buy or sell real estate? That's not necessarily the thing. Sometimes it's going to be, hey, I just met you. May I send you some of this and call you on Tuesday to make sure that we can go through this process? It's like, yeah, that's – so I've called you to an action that's going to help me move closer. So we've got to be able to get into a closing. The second thing is going to be, if we're in the social media aspect of all of this, it's going to be a uh, the two-way side of this conversation. So it's a two-way moment. I need to be able to interact. I don't know how to spell interact. <coughs> interact. Maybe. I'm going to go with that. The teachers out there are probably cringing right now. Interact. So we've got to be able to create interaction. That's two-way. Me commenting on somebody and them liking it back, and that's the end of the exchange is not interaction. Okay. Me commenting on somebody or me creating a moment to where I can have like a quick exchange is not necessarily going to be an interaction, okay? And I even look at it as in this point. Um, let's get actually down to the nitty-gritty details. If I were in a time frame when I could do, do the door knocking and it would be okay, right? We're in the COVID um, quarantine, if you will, although quarantine is a strong word. We're in the COVID uh, highly suggested do the right thing moment, and that is to stay grounded, stay in place. So I can't go door knock, but if I could go door knock and I went to somebody's house and I did this, hey, I'm hosting a uh, open house down the road. I'm the listing agent. Just want to make sure I invite you. In all honesty, if you ask me my opinion, that is a marketing moment because there is zero call to action. You may have invited them, yes but there was no way in which you could close them to what's next. So that was still a marketing moment. Your door knocking was still a marketing mo moment, okay? Hanging a door hanger was a marketing moment. The prospecting is the outbound. So how could we change the conversation when we're looking at even something as simple as door knocking so that you can kind of think about this in the way that you do all of the rest of your marketing, okay? Knock, knock, knock. Hey, my name is Randy. I'm the realtor of 123 Main Street. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that I was going to be hosting an open house I like to make sure that all the neighbors knows what's going on oh yeah thanks that was perfect hey and let me ask you this question I when when I hold open houses my goal is to make sure that I can get our clients the best price the quickest and that's why I do what I do and so one of the things that helps me get the house sold is to hear the opinions of our neighbors and so I would love it if you could come by maybe at about noon so that we have some time to let the people who are looking at the open house come through. Maybe would you be able to come by at noon? And I would love to have your opinion as to what's going on in the house, why you believe it may or may not be poised to sell. And then that'll help me make sure that I can do the best job for my client. Would that be okay for you? Awesome. I'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday at noon and that'll be awesome. Like just come on in. Um, I know there's going to be a sign-in sheet and all that good stuff, but I, I, we know each other, and I, I just love that. So can I count on you to be there on Thursday and noon? Yeah, perfect. Now it's going to be – I've, I've moved it from one section to the next. Now I've actually asked them to do something. You could even enhance the script. I was just shooting for hit, but I could even say, hey, my goal is that every single neighbor in this neighborhood 
would consider me to be their agent. The way that I do that is to make sure I can sell houses the fastest. And the way that I do that is make sure that we're all in a community together. Like, what would you suggest that I do for this house? What would you suggest in this community? What do you love about this community? All those things and say, awesome. Do me a favor then. Come by on Thursday. I'd love to be able to see you come through and check out the home and see what's going on because the feedback from you being a neighbor is much stronger than a stranger walking through the home. And that would mean a lot to me. Can I count on you to be there on Thursday at noon? Whatever it may be, it, it makes sense. And it's a, it's a different scenario when I call somebody to action versus just tell them what's happening. So in this two way interaction, me saying hi, you saying hi is not an interaction. Me saying hi, you saying hi, me saying something else, you saying something else, me getting into a space where I can move it into a call to action, that's prospecting. Prospecting happens when there's a call to action that comes at the end of the period, okay? Making sure we understand that. Marketing-based, prospecting enhanced. A lot of what we're doing is marketing and we don't realize it and that's okay because you still need to do some marketing, but it's easy to make sure that that can be a call to action. It's easy to make sure it can move into the prospecting category if we're cognizant of it. A lot of us just aren't cognizant of it. We think if we put enough content out there, it'll happen, right? It's not exactly that way. There still needs to be some sort of motivation in the space. There still needs to be some sort of outbound in the space. It's, um, it's the old field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. It, that's just not true. If you build it, they, they won't necessarily come. We've got to be purposeful about inviting them into the space. And the way we invite them is into the prospecting element, okay? Hopefully this makes sense. If you guys are on this call and you've got some questions, go ahead and type them in the box. If you are on this call and it's a recording, um, you're welcome to email me, randyolive at kw.com, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have in this space. It's cool? Marketing versus prospecting is a big deal. Next thing I want to talk about, guys, and this is, again, um, I'm, I'm stealing a couple of things from the millionaire real estate agent, and then I'm just enhancing it through what we know about our local market, right? So I want to be able to even enhance my own conversation from MREA into what do we do and what can we actually experience locally into actionable items. Okay, so there's four laws to lead gen. Four laws to lead gen. And again, this is M-R-E-A, Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Number one, if you're reading the book, you might already know. Number one is build database. Number two, feed it every day. Okay? Number three, it's going to be communicated with it systematic, systematically. Communicate with it systematically and number four is going to be service all the leads that come your way service all leads okay these are the four laws to lead generation and i want to break into each one of those right now and help to understand how this actually applies how can we put this in action so Sometimes uh, we really need to connect to a why or we need to connect to a result to help us move into action, right? Data makes us think, feelings make, make us act. The feeling of being left behind or the feeling of having lack or the feeling of having want, that can help us move forward. And in this building your database piece, I'm gonna tell you, there's a bunch of st statistics out there um, for how you do database, what database in return, how all that feed can happen, what, what's the good that can come of it. Well, I've been looking at this and, and understanding on the database side of things, and I'll get you more statistics. There are more out there. Um, but one of the ones that I've been paying attention to, which is really interesting, is this number right here, 100 to 6. Okay? So if I'm looking at my business and I can understand the database statistic or uh, ratio right here of 100 to 6, every 100 people in my database that I am systematically touching, I'm communicating with it systematically, should bring me six deals. And you know, that's either comes from them or a referral that actually closes. Every 100 that I'm systematically approaching should get into that space. So if that is true, if it's a 100 to six moment there in building my database, and I'm going to break down my goals, then I should be able to understand what my database needs to be for me to hit my goals. So if I'm looking at my deal, I'm gonna say, all right, I wanna close 25 transactions. So 25 transactions, if that's really what I want to be able to close, and it's 100 to 6, 6. Alexa, what's 25 divided by 6? 
25 divided by 6 is 4.1667. So to get to 25 by about 4, well, then I need a little over 400 people in my database according to this ratio to get me where I want to go. Okay? So if you're looking at your database right now and you don't have 400 people that you are systematically responding to, that's awesome. I've had a lot of people who will do that. Alexa will be answering everybody else. If I want to really look at the numbers and I want to be able to get to my goal, then I need my database to hit this. I will tell you right now, more than likely, this number is going to change right now because of the way the market's changing. Okay? So we're in, going to be looking into a little bit of a dip. There's going to be a lull. So this number is good to go right now. My expectation is that I would even say double down. I don't have a good number for what it should be, but I do know this. Every percentage that it starts to shrink, this number needs to grow. Okay? It's reciprocating. Like There is a direct correlation between what my database needs to look like and how many deals I need to close. Right now, I'm even thinking about this conversation right now. Everybody who's in New York City wishes they were building this because they just cut off a few of their ability to do lead generation. They've actually regulated New York's ability to do lead generation. And if that follows suit into our world, what are we doing to be able to have a database? So we've got to be able to be building our database. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're looking at ways in which you can build your database, the very first thing you need to do, I'm going to write this down, just start. All of us know people. If you don't know people, then we can have a different conversation. But all of us know people. Every single person that you have in your phone, you should start digging through your Facebook. You should start looking through the people who you have a direct connection with, right? I have a direct connection with somebody who needs to be in my database. Because if I'm looking at the best, most, gosh, the best return on my investment for lead generation, if we're talking about free, is right here. When I was in uh, the, the business of production, right? So now I'm in the business of leadership. When I was in the business of production, I would close on average between 20 and 30 deals per my sphere, okay? And I only had 175 people in my sphere. I was just very methodical in the ways in which I communicated with it systematically. I was very specific in the way that I communicated with it systematically. And so if we're going to build our database, it's not just enough to build our database. We also need to be doing this next one right here, which is to feed it daily. Every single day, I need to set a goal so that then I can enhance my database. And we can and we should, especially if we're putting some marketing materials out there. Anybody who pops in and says, oh, my gosh, this is awesome, or hey, I love this, or whatever, and they're not in your database, you should find a way in which you can contact them to make it easy to be able to collect their information. Some of it can be through landing pages, so you can do it kind of uh, underneath the carpet, right? Hey, I want to send you guys this pamphlet uh, for all of you who are curious about how to build your wealth in investing during this time. Well, as soon as somebody comes in, drop them into a landing page for them to be able to get that brochure. They've got to be able to give you information. That's a build it. That's a build it moment. That's a feed it moment. Okay. So that's not necessarily gotten. We haven't gotten into prospecting yet, but that's the ability to market to somebody to be able to get to a feed it daily moment. Okay. So again, we got to be able to feed it daily. Okay, daily feeding it. Next thing, after feed it daily, is to communicate it with it systematically. And I want to be able to write this word right here. Segment, or another word, retarget. I don't even know if that's spelled right. Retarget sounds good. So here's what I mean by this. If I had somebody in my database and I'm sending out my newsletter and that's the only thing I do, well, first of all, if that's the only thing you do, awesome, because most people aren't even doing that consistently. And yet, here's the thing. If I look at my database, my database is probably filled with my friends and family, past clients, people that I'm still prospecting or cultivating, um, people that I might not even have met yet. And so there's that four different types of people. And if I'm looking at my database and I have that four different types of people, and we could probably keep going to make the list longer. But if I have those four different types of people and I send them a message about what's happening in the Houston market right now, I'm sending out the market report. A lot of people do that. Hey, what's happening in the housing market? And I send that message out to people. It's going to hit with probably 
everybody to an extent, but the ones that are going to be most interested in the Houston marketing report is going to be one specific segment of my world, which is going to be those that I'm cultivating, those who are looking to purchase and or my past clients. My friends and family may skip through that. People who haven't met may skip through that mostly. Some of them will pay attention to it, but that's the people who are most important or, or who are looking at it the most. So when I send that message out, it's going to give me more return. If I actually just craft it instead of it being generic for everybody, what if I crafted it the message specifically for that area so that they can gain the information and in turn use the information for their, themselves and look at you as the resource for that? If I'm looking at um, having a conversation about how to maintain your home, and it's some, uh, a lot of people do this. They'll send out how to maintain your home or how to do certain things. Um, yes, that's a great generic message to send out to everybody. And yet the people who are your past clients who just purchased or uh, who, who just purchased a home, that group may be more interested in knowing, hey, guys, if you don't know, uh, one of the great things that you need to do is to be able to flush your AC line. And this is one of the ways in which you can do it. Every time that like the time changes, you got to pour bleach into the, the little return. Um, by the way, get more information before you tell people to do that. But it's something that is a thing. If I send that message out, what happens instead of sending out broadly? I got more narrow. I was like, hey, guys, thank you so much for purchasing a home with me. One of the things that I do for every single person who purchases a home with me is to make sure you have regular ideas about home maintenance because home maintenance is what's going to help you sell your home in the future, having your home in the best condition possible. Here are a few tips for you guys to make sure that you can get your home in great working condition every single season. Thank you again for working with me, and I hope you're having a great day. If there's anything I can do for you, never hesitate to reach out because in this process, I'm still your realtor, and I look forward to doing business with you in the future. Done. That's a segmented, that's a targeted message. And so when we look at it, we're sending out these generic moments, right, and the communicating with, our, with things systematically. This is where I found the most success in my database. I targeted the way I talk to people differently. I had an advocate list that got a different kind of conversation with me than my uh, friends and family, uh, sorry, not friends and family, my uh, acquaintance group. So I got messages, so I sent messages out much differently. When I'm marketing, and if I'm doing this, I'm looking to feed my business, I'm not gonna get a guy who may have come in to get my pamphlet, and I'm not gonna automatically just put him on a list that spams him all of my content. I may go specifically to that guy and say, to all the people who got that list, now my systematic message is gonna be, Hey, I want to make sure you get this. Hey, here's a sister companion to that pamphlet. Hey, here's another resource that you could use. Hey, here's a, so now for that particular space, I developed a way in which communicated with them the way they wanted to hear the information. Instead of me just sending out a big, broad, generic moment, what I did was I made sure that they heard the message the way they needed to hear it. Because when we speak very generically, and I just think about this, if I walked into a room and I was like, hey, how was everybody doing? My expectation is everybody's gonna say, hey, great. But if I see my best friend in the audience, I'm gonna speak to him. I'm gonna have a conversation with him about our life together. Well, the reality is, is that we can't have that one-on-one -on -one moment with every single person. Instead of speaking to people so generically, we can get specific in our message. And how different would an email come that says right out of the gate, Thank you for being a client with me. I work to make sure my clients are taken care of. And this is the message that I sent to only those so that you know how to maintain your home properly. Yes, that's a great generic message for everyone. A targeted message may be creating a raving fan more than just somebody who knows you exist. That's what this is about. So when I talk about free lead generation, right, or free lead sources, the best is still going to be in our database, and which is why I'm spending so much time on this. We're going to talk about how do we enhance our databases, but this is this is key. Hopefully, you don't feel like you got a little hook winked in here, but this is it. And the last thing I'm going to say is to service all the leads. So in this, and then we're going to talk about feeding it, okay? So when I look at the service all leads, here's the danger that we have if we start hitting it at all cylinders and we truly start gaining leads. We tend to look at our leads and we go, sweet, all of my A buyers, I'm going to talk to. All my B plus, B, C, D, E, and obviously I'm grading my buyers or my sellers, both buyers or sellers. I'm going to talk to these guys because they are the hottest and I want to make sure they're taken care of. 
And then we get these guys in a generic moment and we don't connect to them and we don't do what we should do to make sure that they feel just as serviced as these people. When I say all leads, it really is all leads. If you've created a moment to be able to make a connection with somebody, then you've got to follow through on the connection. Because here's the thing, in a long enough time frame, you've got the opportunity for anybody who comes in, their goal is to purchase a home. Their defining factor is time. If I maintain consistent conversation with you, guess who you're going to see as a person who you want to help buy your home? It's going to be me because I've been consistent with you. Even though you're in this pile and you told me it's going to be 12 months, I helped you understand what it looked like for 12 months of conversation. Everything changes for me to be able to be the guy who you choose. And so if we're going to service all leads, we've got to be able to do go back to this, get into these spaces, talk to our A leads, talk to our B leads, talk to our C leads, talk to the person who says, uh, I actually just accidentally stumbled upon this. It's like, well, cool. Well, if you accidentally stumbled upon it, what did you see that you love? What didn't you love? What could be a great moment here? It gives you the opportunity, again, just to have the conversation, to build our database, to feed it, and to do it uh, consistently. So here we go. Four laws of lead generation, marketing-based, prospecting enhance, and to understand everything that's going on in this space, database first, okay? Please understand that. It's going to be a database first conversation, okay? All right, so those are our moments that I wanted to make sure that we're hitting on. Let's talk about how we feed it. So if we're going to talk about a feeding it moment, let's talk about some of our sources in which we can feed it, okay? This is where I would love for any and all of you guys to open up and have some of the conversations with us while we're doing this. So if I'm looking at the ideas of marketing versus prospecting, there are very definitive moments there, right? There's very definitive. One of the things is prospecting, one of the things is marketing. If we go into this, and I, and I took this from the shift book, if we look into prospecting, prospecting right now. So one of the very first things that we have the ability to do in prospecting is for sale by owner expires. Okay. So we, we do a lot of that. So we've got expires and we've got terminated. Let's start there. This is a big lead source for most people. Some of you guys I know on the call use this as your lead source. Here's what's going to happen though with this. This being used as the lead source, if you look at New York, they just cut that out. And for most of us, we've got to spend money to get these leads. Okay. So if terminated and expired, I can't do anything with, what can I do to be able to reach out to these people? So this is where we're going to have a little bit of a mind shift because I bet there's something that I could do to reach out to those people, even if I am told, like, you can't prospect to them, you can't do certain things. What could I do to look at a terminated and expired listing? Here's what I would suggest, okay? This is just me thinking from my point of view. There's no way in which they can stop me from making sure that these people are still touched. I just can't telemarket them. Writing a letter is super easy to do. It may be snail mail, but that's simple. I know it sounds overly simple right now to have this conversation, but what's going to stop you from writing a letter or writing a card? What's going to stop you from using humor to see if you can get a call back from them? This is going to be a more difficult space. This is a prospecting room for us, and yet it can't happen. But most people are doing a terminate expired, and they're also doing FISBO. This is a better conversation right now. I want you to think about this. If business has just shut down for almost everybody, and we've been told to stay in place, how is a for sale by owner going to sell their home? How is a for sale by owner going to sell their home right now when we've been asked to stay in place? Unless they have a professional who is in an essential business, right? Unless they have a professional marketing their home, they just lost all of their leverage to get their deal done. Now, so some of these people, they're still not going to be able to sell because they don't want to. They're on their own timeline, so it doesn't matter. But right now, I can go out and I can look at every single Craigslist listing, every single Zillow listing, every single place where I can find a for sale by owner, and I need to be calling them and saying, hey, 
I know that you wanted to sell your home. Right now we're in a position where people aren't going to come and view your home. As a matter of fact, now they can't. But they can if you had a professional helping you get there and helping you get the price per square foot that you desire. So what if we had a conversation and saw what we might be able to do to sell your home? Dude, you want to talk about our opportunities right now on FISBO for sale by owner? It's right now. This is one of the most ripe times to be able to talk to the for sale by owners. Okay? Expires just sold. So I want you to think about your just solds. If you have somebody who is a just sold, prospecting moment for a just sold, you 100% should be calling into your just solds and asking them to tell their version of the story that they got. Like, this is a moment for story capitalization, right? So just sold, I can easily call them and say, hey, I want to put a story together for you about how we were able to get your home sold even in the midst of this because some people might not know that this is possible and I want to make sure that everybody knows what's possible in this climate. Just sold is an easy conversation. If you really want to dig into prospecting, if you don't want to prospect, then that's fine. You don't have to. But Just Sold right now is a really great way because they were able to get what they needed in a climate that everybody else was saying is not possible. And now you are the person who helped them get there. You're the sage in the story. They just became the hero. They tell their heroic tale. And everybody who wants to have the same experience has to have it with you. Our ability to get into these spaces and start telling stories this is going to be a very important moment is that we find all reasons to talk to people. Our just soul, you 100% should be looking at them as being your heroes. They just got the deal that they wanted in a climate where everybody said that that's not possible. And it just is. Same thing with your just listed, okay? All of your just listed people, you need to be able to figure out your dialogue and your conversation to make them feel that same sense of accomplishment. I now can call every single person segmenting, right? I can now talk to every single person. I can create some content to be able to have a conversation, an outbound conversation to my just listed that's gonna make them feel in the same way. Hey, we got it done. We were systematic about making sure that the house was perfect in a time when people can't walk through the home it's online. It's going crazy right now. We're going to get business. We got tell the story about what this looks like. And if you're telling the story about what this looks like and you're calling your people to help enhance your story, then you give, you, you've given yourself an opportunity then to like market more, use their stories, ask them, say like, Hey, I'm going to talk about your story, comment on it. So that people feel a lack of fear and a moment to make a decision to get into and sell their real estate. Okay. So, Expired tougher because most of us pay for that anyways. But there's nothing that's going to stop you from writing a letter to those people. And use humor, use sadness, use whatever. There's nothing that's going to stop you from connecting to them. Your return on investment is going to be super low. If we look at something that's super high in the free section, right, for sale by owners, right now need a professional because they can't do the same thing that we can do anymore. Before they could. They could try to do an open house. They could try to do a lot of things. But at this point, they are not – an essential piece to the puzzle. Real estate agents so far are, okay? Just listed, just sold. This is the moment right now to reframe everybody's thinking on how this moment can make the biggest impact on your wealth because I still sell houses in this climate. That's how good I am, okay? All right, past clients. And I know, again, these aren't dumb statements, guys. Past clients. If I'm looking at lead generation, I'm looking at free lead generation, exhaustive lead generation. You're already exhausted if you started doing into this stuff. But looking into my past clients, if I'm looking at my past clients right now, my past clients need to know that I care. And they need to hear a message from me that I care. And they don't need a generic message from me that I care. They need to hear from me that I care. This needs to be just pinpoint targeted to make sure that they are understanding who you are and that you haven't disappeared in this moment because they're getting information from every source. Think about how much information you're consuming from the multiple locations that you're consuming it from. TV, internet, Snapchat, Twitter. Uh, I don't know, I guess I don't know, there's only four sources. Our neighbors, our friends, our family, we're, we're, we're getting information, we're inundated with information. And if we're the people who can provide sanity, 
talk about a free source to be able to create a past client who may now get to understand more. And here's your tools for your past clients. Interest rates are awesome. So your purchasing power just went nuts. The market is still awesome. I can tell you that the market is awesome because our numbers are still awesome, right? It's going to change. It is going to hit a lull. Right now, we've got to double down on this to make sure that our businesses don't, okay? That's just reality. It is going to hit this. It just is. Right now, it's not because we're still dealing with the past clients. We're still dealing with past interactions. We need to double down on our current interactions. If we were able to build this at a super high level, I'm going to tell you right now, once everything clears out, if you only did these things, your pipeline of consistent conversation is easily going to sustain your business because these people have become raving fans that then tell your story. And now your referrals can be enhanced when we're retargeting our world, our message, consistently conversating with our database, okay? So here we are in these spaces. Now, next, so when I'm looking at allied resources, okay? Now more than ever, I'm gonna talk about this tomorrow. You need to be understanding like what are your opportunities with your allied resources? If this is going to be a space for lead generation, allied resources really is a space that we should start digging into. We've helped a lot of our allied resources build their business. Sure, they've helped us with leverage, but we've also helped them build their business. Now is the time to be able to ask. And here's what I know to be true. Most people don't ask their allied resources for referrals, for leads, for any of that stuff. If I were looking at this right now, I would find any and every way I can partner with them to create a, uh, to create a combined message, to create a combined message. And I wouldn't even stop with just the allied resources, right? Who else do you do business with in some capacity? Who do you frequent? How can you make sure that you can tag into them, create a partnered message that then goes out to the world in their social media? Because what you've done is taken all of your friends and combined it with all of their friends, and then they're sharing it in their communities. That's the way in which you can really double down on your efforts to make sure you're reaching about any and everybody. Again, having conversations with your allied resources. Now, here's the biggest thing, and this is one of the things I'm gonna talk about tomorrow in this class. We've treated our allied resources for a lot of us as sponsors for the things that we need instead of actually treating them as a partner. So they may not be willing to partner with you if you haven't acted like a partner ever. You gotta start acting like a partner if you wanna be able to build partners. And anybody who you have a strong partnership with, you should be finding ways in which you can combine your efforts and start moving the needle forward, okay? Hopefully all this is making sense. Okay. Now, when you look at the, the next little bit that's coming up, farming, farming is a big deal right now. If you are quarantined to your home and they said that you can go take a walk, this is my guy taking a walk. What can you do while you're taking a walk? Take pictures while you're taking a walk. And you can post all the crazy stuff that's awesome about your neighborhood. What happens when people start looking at you as a source of what is this neighborhood like? And you put your marketing message out there properly and people are commenting and there's talking about what's going on and you're sharing it out and people are, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And you just humorously go, yeah, you should move here. And people are like, actually, I thought about moving. Boom, I just created a real quick conversation from me doing some of the most simplest stuff. When you look at farming, there's some other things that we can do in the farming side of things, right? I think it's, um, I wish somebody would do this. Nobody I've seen do this, but I think this would be awesome. This is my idea. You can take it and run with it. I'm actually think I'm not gonna post this on my Facebook page. I'm just gonna post it in our forum for our agents. Anybody who tapped in, you're lucky. Roll toilet paper, my business card, a little note. Leave it on their doorstep. Hey guys, when the shit hits the fan, I hope you remember who took care of you. Could be really funny, leaving a piece of toilet paper around. I know that I've already seen people door knocking with toilet paper. Don't door knock. You don't want to open doors to that. I think it's going to get weird. You want to be able to still create that social distancing moment. But if you left this on their doorstep, it could be really funny. And even create it like, um, I know this is a humorous moment, um, but if you find the, if you if you feel so inclined 
um, take a picture of this and tag me in it. I, I think it'd be hilarious to show people that this is a time when we can still create humor. So you find a way in which you can now craft a message that gets them to be involved in some of your door knocking. You can leave pop by gifts all the time. Most people aren't going to like necessarily open a door to you right now. So door knocking is probably a gone version of farming. This isn't. I can take a camera. I went and did this yesterday just to see how easy and how simple I could do it and could it be reproduced. And I think that it can. It took me about an hour to shoot all the footage, about another hour to put the footage together. And I did it all on my phone. I, as a techie, forced myself to do every single element on my phone so that um, it is reproducible to anybody who has a cell phone. Okay. So farming is a big piece of the puzzle. I'm curious. I'm going to stop real quick to ask some questions. Are any of y'all doing anything else right now in the vein of farming? And you're welcome to unmute yourself. Or you're welcome to be, be able to put that suggestion in chat. Um, but I would love to hear some of y'all's things that y'all are doing in the farming space. Actually, I'll tell you what. Put it in chat, and I'll monitor chat, and we'll just keep coming back to that. So if you have anything that you're doing right now in the farming space, just go ahead and toss it back out there. One of the things that I would also look at, um, I don't know about you, but don't create alarm from this, but anybody who's in apartment living, I bet they're curious about what it looks like to get out of an apartment. Because if I'm going to be quarantined, I now just got quarantined with everybody who's in my building. And so the social distancing, yes, we're behind doors, but we're still all like entering in a community with a ton of people. Well, we're our social distancing. If we really measured it, probably isn't six feet at all for most of the things that we have to do. I would find a way in which I can target apartment living. What can it look like to be able to target an ad or something for apartment living, helping people understand the simplicity and the ease of purchasing a home and the possibility that they could be spending less money in a home that they've purchased than what they're doing right now in an apartment. Okay. So I know that that seems and feels like a dust statement. And I don't think people are putting those two things together as a real estate agent who out there is calling apartments right now. I don't think many people are, but I would be finding a way to build a message. Don't create alarm, but I'd build a message saying, Hey, home ownership is easy. Get into, uh, and again, I would have to think more strategically around the message, but like that's a really easy space to be able to go in and people who may already be thinking like, gosh, I got to social distance myself, but yet I've got to check my mailbox every single day. I've got to like walk out to receive my packages every single day. I still have to do stuff every single day to where the people who are here, they're not that far away. They're actually super close. Okay. Apartments. Um, corporations builders, banks, third-party companies. What can we do to start making sure if REO starts happening and you don't have a relationship with the bank, right now is the time to start figuring out how you get into a relationship with the bank. Having a conversation about REO, the way you do that is to have a conversation first. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom, but make sure people understand where is the resource for me to find answers to be able to get the help that I need if I find myself in a space to where I do have to sell my home so that I can make the best decision for my family. REO is going to be a thing that's going to be really, it, it's going to happen. Um, I wanted uh, to kind of jump into a couple of things as we're running towards the end of the time here, just to be able to rapid fire some of the other suggestions. I know I'm starting to like break down some of these things piece by piece, but my hope is that as you're watching me do this, you're in your brain thinking of like, oh my gosh, I'm looking at only doing this one thing. And that the whole time I didn't realize Gosh, yeah, if I go on my walk, I should be taking my camera to take pictures and to post those things about my neighborhood specifically to draw some attention. And then how can I engage with people to be able to create a reciprocating conversation so that then I can feed them into my database and or immediately take them into a presentation about what it looks like to buy or sell right now. If I'm looking at for sale by owner, I didn't think about the fact that a for sale by owner right now cannot sell their home because nobody's going to come visit. It's only going to be through a professional service that I'm going to be able to get this activity done. So now I need a professional more than ever. I need to have a conversation with a professional. I'm looking at my just sold, just listed past clients. They all can get a very different specific message of telling a story that capitalizes on me being the sage that created them to get the hero moment they needed. And now for me, they're telling a story that I don't have to tell about myself. And the world is listening to them go, Hey, I think you should use this person. We all trust Yelp 
to get food reviews more than we trust our friends. If our people are out there giving us reviews in this space, right now in the climate, we look as if we're the best, most trusted expert right now. Allied Resources, partnering with people, farming differently, apartment living, reading through these things, understanding everything that we have to do. Gosh, I even think about client events. How many of you have figured out a way in which you can host a client event? How could you do karaoke on a virtual screen? How could you do a trivia night on a virtual screen? How could you find a way in which you could send your people maybe a package that has um, little tiny wine bottles and, hey, we're going to do a virtual wine testing as a community event? What can you do to continue to create community in lead generation? Obviously, sending them wine isn't free, and yet I've seen a few things where it's like a fun gathering. One of our agents, he's looking at how he can do a pub crawl in his house with his friends like they won't all have the same beers, but it's like, hey, everybody in your living room and you've got to be able to find, you know, one of these beers. They crack their beers open and they have a moment just to have this like together pub crawl. And it's like, all right, guys, we got to go to the next and get. We can think differently. The idea of exhaustive is that we should be exhausted by putting our brain power into being creative about what's happening. And it should be exhaustive that we should start exploring everything that we can do instead of just doing what we've always done. If we do what we've always done, we'll get what we've always gotten. And this is the most in tune time to change the way we look at things because when we do that, the things that we look at change. And now our ideas become survival tools, thrive tools, and me gaining market share tools because I've continued to move forward, choose the things that move the needle forward. Okay, I hope all of this makes sense. I hope this has uh spoken to some of you guys i'd love to hear some of your ahas and to be able to listen to any of you who may have already created some creativity around your lead gen so i'm going to open it up for a couple of minutes and then we're going to be done i really should start getting a sponsorship from waterloo as much as i'm drinking this on camera anybody anywhere any ahas anything that you think you can put into your business right away Some of you may not know how to mute yourself. If you click on your screen, it'll show a two icons, the one that looks like a microphone. If you click that, it'll unmute you. Um, I can't go through and manually unmute you because that would be weird if I could sneak into your room. Um, and so you guys have to unmute yourself if you want to share. If you don't want to share, that's also okay. I have no challenges with that. Um, I just want to make sure this is a space because as a community, we are all better together. And so some of us may have some ideas that we've already put into play that could help. If not, I'm also good to go with that, guys. Love the virtual trivia. Wouldn't that be fun? I saw that somewhere the other day, um, and, I, and it was a uh, um, it was somebody just with their buddies. But I was like, man, what if you created like a trivia night? Like, what if one of my favorite things right now that's happening is um, JB Barnett, um, is a buddy of mine, loosely. When I say buddy, loosely, that's one of my like. If we ran into each other at a grocery store, we'd go like. It was up, but we probably wouldn't stop and talk about catching up on life. Um, every night since, gosh, I think he's on night nine. He has done a live concert starting at seven, and I've posted it a few different times. And I love it. He's just doing a different thing, and he's got so many people coming in and technically sitting in his living room, listening to him play music, interacting with him, requesting songs, having fun, having conversation. I think it'd be fun. What would it look like if you created that? Like. I don't know how you would do this, but like, how could you create a game night? Like, how could you create like a board game night? It's like, who has Monopoly? Everybody raises their hand and has Monopoly. Like, you've got to recreate your board the whole time, you know? So there's a lot of things that we can do when we think about stepping outside of ourselves and understanding like, I can't do this, but I most certainly can change and do that. I may not be able to go host an open house as easily as I used to, but I might find a way to create a Facebook page that is specifically for this home and invite people in as if it were an open house that they have to have permission to get. I don't know. We, we can create so many opportunities differently right now. And we've been given the authority to do that. And most people are awesome about being okay with different right now. If I present my clients or I present a different way in which I can interact with people, most people are willing to do that. Okay. 
Sweet. If there's nothing else, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the recording and we can go do these things, man. It's Legion time. Let's get in it. Let's knock it out.